Hello everybody, I hope you're well. Now we're lucky enough to have yet another video from Cameron Hurst Shifu who is taking us through some more seven star northern praying mantis kung fu. And the last couple of videos he showed us the uh, Chi Shu Dui Da uh, Taolu, the, the, the two person um, pairs form of the seven hands kata. It's not really a kata, but that's my Japanese thinking. But the uh, the partner practice, if you like. Now, there were lots of comments saying uh, this is fascinating, but can we see some of these in, in more detail? So, uh, in this video, he breaks it down and he goes through some of the core principles. So, there's the, the trapping, uh, the throwing, the kicking, and the striking. Now, the trapping obviously includes things like joint locks, which, from an Aikido point of view, is absolutely fascinating. I hope you enjoy this. If you do, of course, please consider subscribing, smash that like button, and enjoy the clip. Because um, it might be something you want to, you know, keep practicing something different. But I just wanted to go a little bit deeper into some of the actions so that you can understand what, what I mentioned about the four striking methods. So if I have a partner, the first one, this action here. Normally what's going to happen is he's going to attack to, to my face, right? That's the, the most, well, in a, in a, I guess it's a real life situation where they try to hurt you, they're going to attack your face. So if he's punching me, it's here. Okay, it's actually quite a quick motion. So, I'm coming here. Now it's going to depend, the way we block, defend, is going to depend how he's attacking me. So this is going to work if the punch is coming more from my left side. Okay, if he's coming from this side, like a back fist, I'm not going to pull it into my face. So just try and understand there's different ways to block, and that is why the next action is the strike. <laughs> So if he comes for a punch or even a, um, maybe kind of like more of a roundhouse, I can come here and then strike here, okay? This is the striking. Striking is pretty, pretty straightforward. From there, not in this action, but when we come here, we're striking again. Any idea why we strike with the wrist? Uh, could be so you don't break your knuckles. We use the iron palm a lot because you don't want to injure your hand. And if you're, uh, say, like that's your profession, a lot of the old mantis masters, they were caravan protectors, so they were like, paid security. If you broke your hands, you're done, right? You're probably out of a job. The wrist you can condition a lot more. The, the key reason is really about leverage. So if he was to punch me and I blocked that way, you look at the position of my wrist, from here, I can actually use the contraction of the muscles to flex the wrist and create more force. Okay, so we're using the wrist as a way to generate sh what we call short power. I guess kind of like most people have heard of Bruce Lee's one-inch punch. You'll notice he does it like that because he uses that, that motion of flexion to create an added snap and transmit the force. So this is just a, another concept. If I'm blocking across, it could also be the other side. If I'm blocking here, I'm coming this way. And we see this in the iron palm when we train. You snap the wrist. Right using the wrist power. I mean, we don't have to do the mantis hand, we could just do that. But that's the, the idea. It's what we call the yin yang sides of the palm, the positive and negative, I guess you could say. So you're using both, if the punch is coming in, I can come here and strike. Or I could go the other way and strike. Kicking, using that action. So when we did, if you punch me, just like in the in the two-person form, and I'm coming here. This is called a sprouting kick, like it's sprouting up. 
from the ground so actually coming up. This action, although it's joined together, it's, it's a throw, it's also a kick. So we consider this one of our kicks. But we use this action a lot in the mantis, where we go, if he's punching, we're going to go to the outside. And that's pretty standard across most martial arts. If you don't know where to go, always go to the outside. That's just good body position or center line. From here, I'm either kicking here. If I want to go to a different type of kick, I'm going to kick him like a roundhouse kick in the ribs. And I'm using the arms, I'm always going to use the grab. Okay? Even if I wanted to kick him high in the seven star pre mantis system, I'm going to grab a few punches. I'm probably going to grab him here and kick him up like that. I want to use that top, what I think of as upper and lower attacking positions. Not only does it give me um, some stability, so when I want to kick him, I can pull him into the kick to increase the force, but it also stabilizes me. So I'm not just, of course we do have just kind of kicking it over the air, but this is a way to increase the control. So we're always using control and grab. So just like this, just like this one here, a, a really traditional um, frame man's kick would just be straight here. Okay? And I'm also going to use the upper attack, whether it's poking him in the eyes, hitting him in the face, just to take his hand out. Because a common counter to a kick is a punch. So if I go to kick, he might come to punch me. So I use that as a block slash attack and basically take out that top hand while I'm kicking or kicking here. Okay? So that's the kicking. Okay. This would be considered a joint lock. Okay. I'm trying to basically knee bar him with my foot. Then we come to here and I'm doing the arm bar. When you see a lot of the other techniques, the principle is the same. So this technique here, even though I'm here, in reality, if you punch, I'm using the same principle in this position. I'm pushing and pulling here on the elbow. Okay? So within, within a lot of the other techniques, there's actually the same techniques. It just looks a bit different. It's applied a little bit differently. And it's, it's a little bit difficult at, at the start when you try to learn like a two person with all these arms and legs going everywhere. I just try to whittle it down to those basic concepts. So if, if you just look at it from the point of view, what's the striking, what's the kicking action, what's the throwing, what's the joint locking? And you'll see it across just about every movement because we've got multiple things happening at the same time, high and low left and right.